Back on the Chad Easty Show, News Talk KFYO. Thank you for tuning in today. For the final time in 2020, let's go to the phones and visit with our next guest. It's Matt McCoviak, Republican strategist. Matt, good morning. How are you today? I'm doing great, Chad. Good morning. Uh, let's see. A, a lot to get into. Uh, yesterday, the Electoral College met, and uh, it's, uh, it, you know, for uh, – uh, all intents and purposes, it, it looks like this thing's over, uh, unless uh, there's uh, a Kraken to be released somewhere, uh, Matt Mikoviak. It, it looks like Joe Biden is indeed uh, the uh, president-elect. Yeah, it's over. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't even know what the scenario would be at this point that would change the outcome. Yeah. Uh, you know, the lawsuits that have been attempted have, have you know, really failed at, at almost every level. Um you know, I don't know. I saw something yesterday about, a, you know, some victory in one county in Michigan. I mean, the scale of, of what would have to change is, is you know, a thousand times bigger than any one victory you could have in one county. Yeah. Right. And um, so, you know, look, it, it just it didn't happen. And it's it's frustrating. I don't look I'm not saying the president and his team need to stop pursuing their le- their legal options. I support, you know, that. Um I support getting to the bottom of exactly what happened and what facts we can glean. And while the, the opportunity to change the outcome is not there anymore, um, I think there is still a valuable opportunity to, to show that, that there really was, there really were problems with this election, particularly as related to mail ballots. And I don't know if the Trump campaign is going to want to continue fighting that battle much longer, but it's really important the RNC and the state parties, particularly in these key, these key states, uh, collect evidence. And, and over time, we figure out, you know, what are we – as a party proposing occur in, our, in the next election, because we yeah. want our voters to have confidence that uh, the, the elections are going to have integrity. So we've got to think about that in the future. I do think this, Chad, was a one-time, um, one-time event. And what I mean by that is, you know, these counties and these election officials in some of these states used COVID as a way to expand mail balloting. And, look, a, a legal person voting by mail and making it easier for them to vote by mail is not in and of itself a bad thing. Uh, what is bad is that, you know, they rushed this with two months to go before the election. They almost certainly did almost nothing to make sure their data was accurate. And if you didn't have signature verification in place, then it's easy for mail balloting, um, you know, to become fraudulent with ballot harvesting and, and other things. So th- there are a lot of questions and a lot of problems out there. Uh, up to this point, I don't think the Trump campaign has done a good job of pre- presenting the evidence in a clear and compelling way that's, that, that, that makes their case. But I don't think that that means that they can't present it over time even after January 20th, to ensure that we have a better system in the future. And that should be the goal of, of every state party, of, of the RNC, of you know Republican operatives, and uh, even just average everyday activists. Yeah, you say it's a, it's a, a one, you know, maybe a one-time thing, but aren't Democrats going to want this, I mean, you know, to, to, to you know, forever now? Uh, you know, the, the, the ease of voting and, and you know, voting by uh, mail and trying to expand this, I mean, if – you know, the, the Democrats, hell, in, even in Texas, they don't want you to show your ID to vote. Uh, if they could pass out a ballot to every single person in Texas, why would they not want to do that? Yeah, it's a good point. And, you know, just because Democrats want something doesn't mean it's, it's uh, you know, something we should pursue. Right. Um, you know, we have to, we have to as, a, as a country and as individual states, have to evaluate, um, you know, the, the integrity of these systems. Um, and my point is you can't, in two months, having never mailed – you know, Pennsylvania, uh, I think, did 200,000 mail ballots four years ago. They did 2.5 million this time. You simply cannot, you know, increase your, your mail ballot program tenfold in two months and do it with integrity. Like, I, I just fundamentally reject that as, as impossible. Um, you know, were laws broken? I don't know. What, was the Constitution violated? I don't know. That was the case that the Texas lawsuit was going to make. Uh, it was always an uphill battle uh, convincing the court that one state – could be injured and, and, and deserved uh, to, have, to, have, to be considered to have standing by the actions of another state. I mean, it was a little bit of a bank shot argument. Um, I thought it was an ar- argument worth making, and I thought if it could get to the court, um, they could present some evidence, and, and the states that I think violated their own election laws and violated their own constitutions um, would have to explain what they did, and that, that, there would have been value to that. But just because that lawsuit failed again, that means doesn't mean the, that the fight is over. The fight is over in terms of trying to change the outcome of this presidential election. The fight that, that is just beginning is to learn exactly what happened in this election cycle, yeah. and to hold people accountable who did violate the law if they did violate the law, and to ensure that this doesn't happen again. I mean, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to vote legally. We want to make it as hard as possible for people to vote illegally. I would hope that sentence is one that everyone would agree with, but um, I'm not 
sure. I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, you, you mentioned something earlier that uh, you weren't sure if the the Trump campaign is going to continue to uh, to fight. Uh, you know the the battles. I noticed something over the weekend uh, in uh, the the email blast that uh, you would get from the Trump campaign about uh, raising money. It's kind of gone from a uh, hey, help us out with court cases. We're fighting against the uh, against the left uh, to you know to fight against stealing this election. To more of a hey, we're just we just need money now uh, type of uh, uh, type of fundraising email. Is that do, do you think that that is kind of a, a signal that mm, maybe they're just trying to raise money now just to raise money and not necessarily uh, believing in these court battles? Well, I mean. You know, if, if they're not going to continue fighting the court battles because they've there's no pathway or because they've effectively lost them, um, then it would be you know borderline fraudulent to say, hey, give money and we'll use it for this purpose. If you're not you know using it for that purpose, right? Um, I think it's pretty hard at this point to make a compelling case that the Trump campaign needs more money. I mean, I don't I don't care what their bills are and who, who's on contract and all that stuff. I mean, they've they raised something like two hundred million dollars since the election. So I uh, hope your listeners, you know. Can, can come to that conclusion. The campaign is over. He's not going to be reelected. He's not going to be reinaugurated. Um, you know, at some point in the future, if he wants to run again, maybe people can can be uh, persuaded to contribute. But at this point, I would encourage you, if you're doing anything financial, to support the effort to win the two U.S. Senate runoffs in Georgia, because yeah. I really think the entire future of the country is at stake. Yeah, now more so, than ever. And I, think and I think to your point, Chad, you're going to see the Trump campaign and the RNC shift their message away from all this stuff to Georgia. I mean, you've already seen the president start to do that. He was in Georgia, what, last week, a weekend before last. I believe he'll go down there at least one or two more times. I think Vice President Biden or President-elect Biden, if that's what we have to call him now, uh, is, I think, in Georgia today. So you're going to think, see the attention of the country uh, really shift to Georgia over the next three weeks. Yeah, what, what, is, uh, what are you hearing uh, out of Georgia? What's the, the latest in those uh, two races? Yeah, I don't know that I know anything more uh, than I did maybe last time we talked about this. I would say that you know the polling that I've seen has shown it to be very close race, a couple points one way or the other. I don't know that I trust the polling that much. Polling in runoffs is, is, is notoriously bad because runoffs are so unpredictable about who actually turns out. It's, it's about motivation. It's about turnout operations. Um, it's about you know your message and how much money you have, uh, it, all kinds of factors. Uh, so, But I, I do think these races are close. I think the thing that concerns me, is this boast by Stacey Abrams that she has a million people who have requested mail ballots. Uh, that's a significant number, and I imagine that number is continuing to rise. So that's, 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 that, that could be enough you know, to, win, to win the election. I saw there was a discouraging d- development yesterday where, the, and this is, in my mind, indefensible, the Georgia Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, who's a Republican, is, is refusing requests by the two Republican U.S. Senate candidates to release a list of of, of what you might call new movers, people who've moved to the state in recent weeks. You know, the Democrats have talked about, like, this is so ridiculous, but they're doing it, and they've talked about it, literally having people move to Georgia for a month so they could ro- vote in the election. Apparently Andrew Yang has done that as an example. Uh, how many people have done that, I don't know. If it's a, a few hundred, I'd be surprised. If it's more than that, I'd be shocked. But either way, I don't understand what the justification is for the Georgia Secretary of State to not release the new movers list. I mean, that's just, you know incomprehensible to me. So these races are, are close. Uh, I will say the, the NRSC, the Senate Campaign Committee, has outraised the, the Democratic Senate Campaign Committee as it relates to Georgia pretty con- pretty convincingly since uh, Election Day, and that's good. But they need more money and they need more help. And I know there, there are a lot of activists heading out to Georgia to go to volunteer. Uh, there's something called the Mighty uh, Texas Strike Force. If you're interested, you could uh, look them up on Google and perhaps even uh, have them pay for your travel if you're interested in going out there for, for you know seven seven days or ten days. Yeah, it's going to be important for uh, Republicans to win at least one of those seats. Uh, otherwise, uh, everything everything's on the table uh, for the left. And and you know no matter how moderate you may think uh, Joe Biden is, uh, his his cabinet's not going to be uh, you know uh, AOC and the rest. They're 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 going to have fun uh, trying to bend you know uh, you know large capacity uh, magazines and AR-15s and, uh, you know, try to make Puerto Rico a state. I mean, everything's on the table uh, if you have the House, Senate, and the White House. No doubt. No doubt. It's all it's all on the table and it's all at risk. And if uh, we don't fully mobilize and win these two races, um, it's going to be a it's going to be a very difficult uh, future. Yeah. So we fought, we fought hard. I mean, if you think about it, think about all the effort that went into holding the North Carolina Senate seat, the Maine Senate seat. Uh, the Iowa Senate seat, um, South Carolina Senate seat, right? All those efforts. I mean, they're you know, 
you kind of waste those efforts if at this point we come up short and we don't do everything we can do these last three weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Matt, tell folks uh, how they can sign up for your newsletter as we uh, wrap up the year and also uh, tell them uh, about your podcast. Yeah, the newsletter is called Must Read Texas. Uh, there's a lot of news out there across the state. You're probably missing some of it uh, from, from day to day or week to week. We read all the news so you don't have to. We deliver one clean, easy-to-read email with everything you need to know each weekday morning by 9 a.m. You can sign up for a free one-week trial at mustreadtexas.com. If you're looking for another podcast that will make you smarter about what's going on, check out Mac on Politics. It's available in the iTunes Store, on Google Play, on Stitcher, and on Spotify. All right, uh, Matt, uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family, and we'll visit with you again in 2021. I look forward to it. Merry Christmas to you as well and all your listeners. Take care, Chad. All right, thank you. That's Matt McCoviak, Republican strategist.